Hey guys, I'm Jacob. Uh, you're watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. We're here with James Yeager. And he is that much taller than me. <laughs> I, have to, I need to readjust the camera so I can get the top of your head in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here in Camden at Tactical Response. And uh, if you are not familiar, Tactical Response is a training facility. Uh, and, and James runs it. He knows a thing or two about guns. I've heard. Uh, James is a, a fellow patriot as well as a, a prepper. And I wanted to talk to James um, about a little bit about a series that I'd done in the past, R and R for Recon and Resistance. It's a, and I did videos on resistance uh, as a logistically inferior and small patriotic group of individuals, and I talked a lot about battle rifles. Well, <clears throat> I, I've done a similar video where I talk about that non-compliance is not patriotic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, you uh, just I'll kind of go over something we we kind of talked about this briefly before we started but like a sub gun shoots pistol calibers now <coughs> sub guns aren't sub guns because they're small they're defined by the cartridge they shoot and the definition of a sub gun shoots a pistol caliber round so a nine millimeter mp5 is a submachine gun but if an mp5 was three times as long still a sub gun uh, then there's the assault rifle or intermediate cartridge which is typified by a 762 by 39 uh, or uh, 556, 223, whatever. And then next up is the uh, general purpose machine gun. Um, it's a belt fed machine gun, but if it's fired out of a semi auto magazine fed rifle, that's called a battle rifle or a full battle cartridge. Minimum full battle cartridge is like a 308, but they're typified by, by 30 out 6, 7.62 by 54R, and things like that. And then uh, after that, it's like cannons, 20 millimeter, and stuff like that. So, so if it shoots a 7.62, by 51 round it is by definition by definition a battle rifle cartridge and a battle rifle right so i was talking about the importance of this uh due to the range that it gives to the fighter so essentially higher trained fighters smaller groups light packs and long range less ammo longer range now your assault rifle i believe is easier to shoot it's cheaper to train with, the ammo's cheaper, you can carry more of it. Uh, it's a very versatile platform, uh, rifle. And when I was talking about recently about assault rifles and AR-15s and how it's the time to buy them about six months ago because they're so affordable, people said, have you given up on the r, &R concept? Have you given up on the battle rifle? I said, absolutely not. They're, they both have a place, but I wanted to talk to you. If, if you had a small group of dudes, uh, and they're interested in training, where, where would you say that the battle rifle would be more appropriate and where would you say the assault rifle would be more appropriate? Well, if we look at what the military does now, they started the SPR program. Um, hell, it's been a while now, but and that was just another upper. And you could take that upper that had better scope on it and a longer barrel and more accurate and stuff, and you put that on your, your lower. And then that eventually, because the lower, the, because the, Mill spec triggers aren't that good. That became a whole separate rifle. But at first, it was a, just an upper. And they decided that the SPR, which was was 5.56, gave at least, they had one guy in every squad that had that, and it gave at least one guy this special purpose or ability. So if we extrapolate that to the DMR, which is the, the battle rifle version of that, I think that every, every, every team, like, you know, there are people that really don't know much about warfare that go, commonality, everybody should carry the exact same thing. Well, no. Like, we, 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 you know, we need to have guys that, you know, this guy does the breach, this guy does that, and whatever. Well, same thing. I believe that there needs to be a guy that, not a sniper, right? not a sniper, but a guy that can make, you know, really solid hits at extended distances. And uh, and I don't know how much you want me to talk. I'll keep talking. I think an AR-15 is a 300-yard gun. Period. Put some good glass on it. Now we're squeezing it out to four, maybe five. You know, in a fight. Uh, but uh, but a 308, man, that thing's solid out, out, out there. And further, maybe maybe good glass and a good good ma uh, match grade finger. Right. Uh, you know, maybe maybe a good fight stopping gun out to 800 even. And uh, so, uh, but I believe that, that a, a team is well-rounded. We look at any team. Look at the A team. They had the guy that did the flying, the guy that did the driving, right. the guy that did the planning. So, I, you know, if you look at our Special Forces A teams, we got a medic, an intel guy, a gun guy, you know. I believe that any team should be that way. And, and 
with respect to commonality, not, don't be different for the sake of being different. Um, if if guys are running AR-15s, you shouldn't show up with an AK to be different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, but there are people with special tools and special training that goes along with it that that, that make the the team more flexible, more fluid, more capable. You know, right. Now, so the reason that I originally was harping on the battle rifle was in Afghanistan, I got to be on the other end of the fight as the logistically superior force. And I kind of realized that at about 300 yards, someone could uh, take some shots at us and they're going to live. We're not going to be able to respond to someone taking a shot at 300 yards who's then gone. They they could even dump a mag. And at about 300 yards, we're we're never going to find them. Yeah. Whereas you start getting up closer, 200, and especially 100 yards and under, if you pop out and start laying down some rounds, we're going to freaking smoke you, right? So thinking as the dude who would be uh, focused or a small team focused on carrying lightweight a long distance uh, and trying to make hits at a longer range when necessary, but more importantly, collecting intel because people don't think about that, how important that's going to be. Yeah, I was pushing the battle rifle, but again... I would say, how many people do you think come and train with a 308 as compared to 556? Um, well, I mean, if you, you know, our fighting rifle class is going to be mostly 556, 762, 39, and then we have an intermediate distance rifle class. We, we, we also ran a very similar class called Battle Rifle for those guns for the longer distances, and we just kind of mesh those two curriculums together, and we just teach that as intermediate distance rifle. So, to answer your question, um, one in a hundred might shoot 308 in the, the uh, uh, fighting rifle class, but in the intermediate distance rifle is where we do see a higher percentage of the 308s and stuff. Now, but you probably do more fighting rifle classes. Yeah, yeah much more than intermediate. So, 308s more expensive, higher recoil. The gun's going to weigh a little bit more. The ammo's going to take up more space. Your mags are going to be more ex- um, larger and heavier. People are going to be less likely to train with a bio rifle than they are with an assault rifle. And I started harping on the assault rifle. That does not believe that I no longer support the battle rifle, obviously. And I think it's very important, especially if you're talking about three to four man groups on an OP doing recon. I believe dudes should be hooked up with a battle rifle and maybe a sniper in there as well. Um, But the assault rifle has its place absolutely unquestionably i haven't i haven't left one for the other but there are instances where one or the other may be the superior choice but with either one you have to get training and the training is more important than what you're carrying whether it's a battle rifle or assault rifle because i could be carrying this 308 and you're going to be carrying a 556 and it's not going to matter right so it's get training is the most important thing and if you can go out there and train with a battle rifle do it yeah so, you know, I guess, you know, the, the final thing I would say about it is, you know, your, your team has to be multi-capable. And if you, if you were mechanics and you all had 916 wrenches, right. you're not multi-capable. You can turn the hell out of some 916 nuts and bolts, but, but that's it. So, and, I, and I'm also not saying that everybody needs completely different gear. There should be some commonality. But in general, um, I would confine it to... To five five six and three oh eight, and mm-hmm. then whatever you guys want to do, as far as special specialization after that, I think uh, as long as you got training to back it up, and it, and then and then practice, you can you can make a solid team. Well, and the other thing with um, specialization is, um, if you're walking long distances, you can't carry everything. Right. So. You can't carry the breaching shotgun, grenades, smoke grenades, mortars, 556, 308, multiple guns. It's not a video game. And especially if you're walking long distances, say you're doing recon, you every dude wants to carry ideally as little as possible. So except, except for picture day, then they want the, the belt feds. Right. Right. Picture day. Well, it's funny when you look back at old pictures of dudes in the wild, wild west, they've got like six guns on them and two swords and everything else. They're like, hey, I need to get my picture. Can I 
Bar yeah, your can guys. you guys hand over some guns here? Right, right. So, anyways, I want to do this video with you, James, with your insight on uh, when a battle rifle might be uh, practical as compared to when an assault rifle might be practical. There are benefits and detriments to both, and they both fulfill an important role for the Patriot. And uh, really, which one you choose uh, is going to depend on which you can train with. I would rather have you fighting with me with training in an assault rifle than you with me with a battle rifle no training, 10 times out oh, of 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So which one you can train with and what you think is going to be important. Uh, a little bit of what we're talking about with preparing for an issue is what you believe is going to happen. I believe, obviously, that recon and resistance are going to be the two things that we need to focus on the only time you're pro you got you got to collect intel intel is so important nobody ever talks about recon techniques and that's something i'm going to do more in this series but you can't just go head to head with your eight guys against any kind of military yep. and those eight guys you might have your wives and, and children at home and you might have another eight guys but every single person you lose is not just a number like it is for a military. You can't take stupid chances. And the best way to stay alive, if you can, stretch out that distance. Yeah, absolutely. So for my idea of what's what could be important or the role that I could play, uh, the battle rifle is the choice. And if your idea of the role that you would play as a patriot is different, then your choice may be different. But everybody should probably at least have an assault rifle. There's no reason to not have an AR-15 or an AK-47 right now in America. Yep, absolutely. There's none. Thank you for doing this video with me, James. <laughs> I always enjoy it. I'm sorry for carrying on so long. No, but, no, no. Uh, no the, the, these are things that people want to hear about. They want to hear my opinions. They want to hear your opinions. And uh, let's face it, th there's a whole bunch of people in the gun YouTube world that won't ever talk about it. Sadly. Sadly. So, uh, guys, come on down to Tactical Response. Get some training. Train it reputable places, and uh, that's what you need to focus on before making a Gucci anything. Thank you for watching. Also, if you want to support the channel, please go to beachandtactical.com. You can order one of my speed slings or other survival gear that I have. I also have affiliate links in the description box below, and I do have a Patreon. All of that will be below. I greatly appreciate uh, your support. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I always reply, and I hope that you have a blessed.